Hi guys, so this is a long awaited video for you. I'm not doing a crafting video today, but I'm going to do this video instead, which I think you'll find um, fun and exciting. So I'm going to talk you through how I print on fabric. Um, now, just very as a disclaimer before we get started is what I want to say is if um you need to know if your printer will take the fabric through it for example some epson um, eco tank printers don't i've heard from other people because i haven't dared put it through my eco tank i don't use my eco tank for this i use my hp um, it's a photo smart pro 8715 Okay, I had a very inexpensive eight, but that my HP printer is not an expensive one. Okay, I don't buy, I didn't buy an expensive one. Um, so I also had an ch even cheaper one. I think um, years ago my dad had bought me one, um, a print my my first printer I think I had, and it was um, I think it cost something like. 60 euro or 79 70 euro or something like that it was really cheap and it used to print it was like a workhorse that printer i probably had it for 10 years and it printed on fabric it was fine so this is printed on my hp printer so that's the first thing to take note of okay if you if you have one of, i have a i only i have the second bottom model of the um, eco tank printer and i don't think it would take the fabric i haven't dared try so um although i i did have one comment from one lady and her print her eco tank did print on fabric but it might have been one of the more expensive ones i don't know but i'm i just don't want you to go and break your printer trying to print on fabric okay so this is for the people who have a printer that um if you've got an hp I'm not even though you know maybe some models don't take it I don't know I don't want to be responsible for people breaking their printer that's the first most important thing to say that's your decision to make I'm just going to tell you how I do it okay so first of all we need to talk about fabrics okay because fabrics are the key so um, let's talk about what I wouldn't use okay these are antique hemp's um, and they're natural colors and these I would not use. Although these, as a texture, could probably go through it. I mean, like, you could probably print on them. But the colour of the fabric is going to alter the colour of your file. So depending on your file, like, this is going to become very dark. Print out very dark on these. Because there's already, um, you know, the beigey colours in there as well. So it's going to change the colour of your printout. So I wouldn't. This one might be a little bit too textural. This one I reckon I could print on that one. You go there's the aussie in me i reckon um but um this one i feel like it might be a little bit too slubby and coarse so i wouldn't print on that okay number one then i have this one i probably well, that probably would print but it's a little bit you can see it's a little bit coarse a little bit textural so i don't think i would print on that one i wouldn't bother besides the fact that it's a lovely um fabric too so um a lovely i think this one's more of a linen um, but it's got, you know, some woven work in there and I just probably wouldn't bother with that one. This is a beautiful piece of, it, I think it's hemp. I usually buy hemp. Um, it's very worn. It's thin, uh, thinnish, and this would be lovely to print on. This will give, this is a linen here, this one. Um, this is slightly coarser than this one, but um, I, it would print out just fine. Just fine so you need to use your instinct on this um this is a coarser hemp it's got lovely um feel to it. it's quite thick but it's not overly thick and this i feel like would print fine i have printed on this before actually i probably got some bits fly oh no i've taken them in the other room um i have printed on this sort of thing before and it's perfectly fine as well this type of thing so I just brought those in to show you the examples and also um, cotton. You can print on cotton as well and linens, as long as they're not too textural and not too, too thick. This is like a medium thickness, not, not overly thick. Um, and then, of course, I did I show you this one? This is a fine linen. It's very old. Oh, look at those lovely buttons. I'll have to recuperate those. It's very old and this would be perfect to print on. So I thought um, what I'll do is I'll show you how I attach it to 
how I print. So I've got this piece of cardstock here. You can see it's been through my, it's quite grungy. It's been through my printer a few times. It's got fluffs on it and dust and things because I've used it a few times. Um, so it's just a piece of 160 GSM cardstock. So if you're in America and you, you have your pounds of cardstock, you need to Google 160 GSM to pounds in pa paper. Okay, so I use just a, this is our A4 international paper size. And what I do is I spray it. I spray it with a um, adhesive spray, removable, removable. It has to be removable, not permanent. Okay, this is the brand is Icona, but um, just look up removable adhesive spray. Okay, glue spray or whatever. On I bought it on Amazon. Okay, I spray on here so you can see it's tacky. It's just tacky. Um, and then what I do is I actually just put it on top of my this is beautiful actually I can't wait to stitch this one um I just put it on top oh here's another piece just a minute I'll just show you this piece too this is a hand towel this is a hemp hand towel this would be lovely to print on as well it's a little bit slubby but this would be good actually maybe I'll cut this one just to show you how I stick it on um because it's just easier to cut that's all and I might choose the bit even where there's a bit of rust or here in the center so all I do is put my um piece of paper on there I don't push it down yet I want to um, cut it down now there are people another way you can do it is with freezer paper you can iron the freezer pa freezer paper onto the back of your fabric and then um, and then and then you can put that through your printer I don't um, do that because I don't want to have to keep buying freezer paper it's just as easy for me to do it with cardstock and it's only a it's only a light card stock. So once I've done that, I sort of uh, iron it all out. I don't. You, I mean, you didn't. I didn't even iron this. You don't have to iron it because you just iron, flatten it out with your hands because it irons out with with the glue. It sticks down. See, that's fairly well stuck. And then you need to trim it flush here to the paper. Sometimes I add this paper. I accidentally cut it too once, and I'll keep those bits because I'll use them. Okay, and then um, so you cut it all flush. It's a very quick video. Like so. Now I'm not going to show you the printing process. I'll tell you why. Because every printer is different. My printer, I have to feed my paper in. I put it in the tray upside down and then it, it feeds it through that way and prints on that side. Um, other printers you put face up like my Epson I put it in the top loading tray and it's face um, it prints on the face the the side that's facing me sort of thing so I've trimmed it flush um, you want to make sure there's no um, I'll show you on this one you want to make sure um, what I do I make sure there's no stringy, stringy bits those or that's happened because I've had this printed for a bit um, those or need to be trimmed off around here you don't want anything that's going to catch in the printer and then I take it to my printer and I put it in the tray but before I put it in the tray I run my hands over it again just to make sure it's all flat maybe I will go and print something and then I'll come back and show you so um, I run my hands over it and um, make sure it's all flat now that I've stuck it down here I'm thinking I'll go and print something on it so that way I can show you how it turned out on this slightly more textural this is smooth and this is textural so I'll go and do that and then I'll come back I'm just trying to think was there something else I wanted to tell you um, anyway I'll go and print on it and um, as I said I won't show you that because that's just silly just watch me put it in the tray upside down and and hit print um, I, I oh the one thing I will say is I put it on um, for my HP printer because that's where I'm printing it I put it on um, thick paper I have the choice of choosing like the thickness like whether it's a light a thin paper or regular paper or thick I put it on thick paper because it's it's going through and it's thick okay so I'll go and print on it and then I'll come okay, back so I'm back it printed uh, I'm, I'm doing video Lou I printed it printed beautifully on um, the hemp the color came out slightly different I thought I'd print out the same one so um, I'm not quite sure why here it printed because this came this is exactly how this one came out um, I'm seeing 
like the color of the fabric is fairly similar but um this might be slightly more oatmeal sort of color i don't know it was the linen I, this is hemp and that one's linen so i'm not sure why the color came out in a different way this is more true to the colors so it's still on the paper i just peel it off look at that and this is still very tacky so i can stick another piece on there and I'll, I'll probably do three pieces on the same piece before I go and spray it again. See how it's still sticky? Um, and I usually have two pieces on the go. This one's not quite as sticky as the other one. And I store them. I just put them together like that and then just put them away near my printer. So I've got them there ready. And I'll reuse them until they become really gross. And this is not sticky at all on the back. I'll let that dry. Now, we do need to talk about how permanent is it. Well, I'm not quite sure. As I've mentioned before, I had a, um, I had some ephemera bits like this printed out on fabric that I was using. And I had just out of curiosity taken a little piece and ran, ran, it, ran it under the water, like gave it a rinse for a bit. Not in the washing machine. And I then put it in the dryer and it didn't even fade. However, it could fade over time. Um, you can, um, someone's mentioned you could um, iron it, like put something over it and then iron it. And that might heat set it. Um, and then Patricia also wants, um, has mentioned that you could spray your fabric with hairspray, leave it 24 hours, print on it, and then spray it again with hairspray. I just generally just um, use my spray fixative. Uh, I'll just grab it. It's this one that I like. Um, no, that is that it? That's not the one I like. This is the one I like. No, this one. Um, just to spray, um, spray final, van, uh, final varnish is what you use. Just a spray fixative. This is by Ferrario. I don't know where they're, where they're made, Ferrario. Oh, Bologna. Um, yeah, so I just use that. And, and you can just give it a little spray when you're done with it. And it should um, keep it. There's, a, there's um, a lady in the UK, I can't remember her name. She does a lot of stitching with... Um, printed fabric that she's printed like text and stuff and um she said it might fade over time it's obviously you wouldn't use it you wouldn't use it in a quilt that you're going to wash fairly often this is great for um slow stitching that's going to be framed or or um, um what did i want to say um journal covers and that sort of thing so um yeah, so that's how I print on the fabrics. Very easy. As long as you've got a printer that will take it. I really like, I mean, I like both of them. This one's vibrant on this fabric and it's more textural. I don't know if you can see the difference. And then this one is more faded and um, it's just a beautiful linen. You can certainly print on cotton. You don't have to have um, antique stuff. You can have a nice piece of linen and print on that. You can have a nice piece of cotton and print on that. The other thing I wanted to talk about quickly before I go is that you can also, um, on Amazon, you can buy, I can't remember what the brand is, um, you can buy fabric for inkjet printers and it's backed on a freezer-like type paper and it comes in sheets. Um, the, ones that, the one that I found, there was a roll um, that I found it was a poplin cotton so it's a just a regular sort of thinnish sort of cotton um, I didn't like the texture of that as much as I like this um, however it might be more friendly to your printers and something like this would print out lovely I mean it would print out just like that probably um, as it would on paper and and that one came on a roll you just look up um, fabric um, for in jet printers is what I would look up there's also um, I also got a twill and that came in sheets so that was a bit more expensive but I, I just um, bought it uh, to just give it a go and see how it was that came in sheets for US printers and I had to trim a little bit off and and my my files just fit on it because I didn't do adapt to to page size um, and and they're also another option um, otherwise cotton is fine um and of course antique fabrics but just make sure um they're not overly coarse they can be a little bit coarse like this one with a little bit of texture but not overly you know you'll have to use your your um what's it called your intuition for that yeah so i think i've covered everything yeah i think i have so you can use freezer paper cardstock and use the adhesive spray 
to, in my opinion, this is probably the more economical way of way to go. Um, if you have uh, a printer that doesn't like that, um, you can buy the pre-prepared, um, or it's on a roll um, of fa fabric for the printer, or um, you can buy the twill one or cotton sheets. But I think you get like five for a you know twelve euro or something like that. It was quite expensive. Um, but the roll, the roll, the one that the cotton poplin wasn't as expensive, and I got, I think I got eleven sheets out of it, or some ten or eleven sheets out of it. So that was pretty good. So yeah, that's my video on printing on fabric. Um, let me know how you go. Please don't tell me if you break your computer. That's your printer. That's your decision. If you want to take the risk, um, I know that from past experience, my HP took it, so I tried it in this one, and it took it, so I was very happy. But um, you're going to have to make that call yourself about that. That's very important that you decide for yourself whether you want to risk it or not. Um, maybe give it a go with maybe purchase the ones from Amazon or wherever and, and try those and see how you go with those and then take the plunge with something else if your printer doesn't overreact to that. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I think that is it. I hope... Um, that is helpful to you and I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.